Hi, my name is Professor Silver, and in today's class, we'll break down the history of Ash's Sceptile, detailing his journey from a headstrong Trico into a cool, calm, and collected bruiser. This video is brought to you by Surfshark. Trico exploded into the anime by pummeling Pikachu in Trees a Crowd. The mouse trespassed on his tree home, so he stifled him with his signature twig, lightning speed, and mighty tail. Had his elder not told him to stand down, Trico would have kept fighting to his dying breath. The elder also asked that he abandon his dying home, but Trico refused as he wanted to return the tree to its former glory. He wanted that as he was thankful for all the food and shelter that it provided. His loyalty impressed Ash, so Ash aided in the tree's recovery. His support earned him Trico's respect and friendship. Sadly, their efforts fell apart after Team Rocket stole Trico's kin. They thwarted the trio, but couldn't save the tree. Luckily, it eased Trico's grief by affirming that its spirit would live on in its seedling. Since the tree's death severed his forest ties, Trico opted to join Ash in his adventures. Like Bulbasaur, he only did so after Ash proved his worth and beat him in battle using Pikachu's electrical might. Trico didn't sow mayhem like Chikorita or disobey orders like Turtwig, but his shy nature and loner demeanor initially presented a major issue. He had always lived alone, so he acted cold towards Ash and his friends in A Tale with a Twist. It wasn't until Survivor hurt Torchek that he finally showed he cared. Regrettably, his heroism was rewarded with sudden defeat, searing pain, and a battering of pride. It pained him to lose, so he ran off and trained until he could triple Pound's power by spinning. Using the technique, he won the rematch and cemented his friendship with Ash. Ash could have caught many other grass types, but he chose Trico as he wanted the absolute best. Had he wanted a reliable VPN as well, I bet he would have tried to catch our sponsor Surfshark. Besides having the coolest name in the game, Surfshark is also perfect for protecting your privacy, masking your info while torrenting, and expanding your Netflix library. If you live in a country where Pokemon, My Hero Academia, and Sailor Moon aren't available, you can just log on to Surfshark and change your location to watch them with ease. Another great thing about Surfshark is that it can be used on an unlimited number of devices. This means that you can share it with both your friends and family, further reducing your cost. No matter where you go or how many devices you own, Surfshark will always have your back. If you're ready to secure your digital presence, click the first link in the description and use my code SILVER. Beyond getting an incredible 83% off your normal price, you'll also get the first three months for free. Best of all, Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. And now back to Trico's history. Because Ash showed true devotion throughout the ordeal, Trico learned to trust in his guidance and respect his commands. Because he never once wavered in his loyalty, Ash nurtured his warrior nature and transformed him into an ace. As it happens, their training got off to a rocky start as a Pelipper cheated them in use at a mouthful. Thankfully, they more than made up for the loss by beating an Ariados in All in a Day's Wormhole. Although Trico's power was undeniable, his lack of grass-type attacks left him vulnerable to Roxy's rock-types at the Rustboro Gym. In Winter by a Nose Pass, her Geodude intercepted Quick Attack, tanked Pound, activated Rollout, and beat him with Mega Punch. In spite of Trico's bad moveset, however, Ash used him at Brawly's Duford Gym and braved the wave. Trico depleted his energy beating Machop, so he then fell to Makuhita. Not only did the fighting type land Vital Throw, Arm Thrust, and Seismic Toss, but it also evolved and won with Knock Off. To get his revenge, Trico trained with Ash on Duford Island. While there, he mastered the art of moving like a wave. This was made evident when Ash used him to catch Corphish and got Corphish. Mimicking the waves, he blocked Bubble Beam, preempted Crab Hammer, and won with Pound. Thereafter, Corphish became Trico's fiercest rival. Their rivalry took center stage in turning over a new Nuzleaf, but they eventually became frenemies at episode's end upon beating Team Rocket. The Duford adventure supercharged Trico's abilities, but did little to save him from Jesse's dust talks in seeing as believing. The bug beat him in battle, but it was only because he had sacrificed himself to save Beautifly. Had it been a fair fight, he would have won using nothing but Pound. Despite the loss, Trico still affirmed his status as an ace during the rematch with Brawly. The battle took place in just one of the geysers. After fighting the chop, he hurt Hariyama's legs, ruined Vital Throw, and won with Pound. Soon afterward, Trico further proved his power by fighting a wild Shiftry and jumped for joy. Shiftry's bullet seed impressed him, so he set out to learn the move in what you seed is what you get. To help him master the attack, Ash used him against Natasha's Slugma and Grovile. Grovile ultimately proved the victor, but Trico mastered Bullet Seed anyway thanks to Ash's annoying antics. Due to his knowledge of Bullet Seed, he beat Nikolai's Marshtomp in Zigzag Zangoose. 
Unfortunately, it wasn't enough against gym leader Flannery and Going Going Yawn. Bullet Seed freed him from Slugma's body slam, but the burn he then suffered accelerated his loss to Torkoal. Besides learning Bullet Seed and fighting at gyms, Trico also showcased his strength by providing ample utility support. As examples, he helped Pikachu learn Iron Tail and all things bright and beautifully, down the trio and let Bagons be Bagons, and saved Ash from a giant Gulpin and Gulpin it down. Because of his training, Trico went hit for hit with Guy's Loudred in Exploud and Clear. At the start of the battle, he used Quick Attack, Tank Stomp, landed Bullet Seed, and survived a bevy of blows. The battle took a turn for the better after he landed Pound and evolved into Grovile, but Loudred evolved at the same exact time, lost all control of itself, and ran off into the wilderness. Upon finding the angry Bruiser, Grovile countered Stomp, tanked Hyper Voice, let loose Bullet Seed, and landed Leaf Blade. Team Rocket deprived him of a win by disrupting the battle before it ended, but I have no doubt he would have won had it continued into overtime. Following his Evolve debut, Grovile reintroduced himself to his teammates in Go Go Ludicolo. While his new form excited most of them, Corfish was nothing but jealous. It took almost the entirety of the episode for the water type to grapple with its inferiority complex and again offer Grovile its friendship. Following the reconciliation, Grovile proved himself as one of Ash's best fighters by having many battles. In Double Dilemma, he trained for Ash's battle with Norman by fighting Golduck and a plethora of other Pokémon. During the gym battle itself in Balance of Power, Grovile starred opposite Slacking. Slacking blocked Bullet Seed, caught Leaf Blade, and threw him for a loop, but he soldiered onward with Bullet Seed. Although Slacking then landed Earthquake and a bevy of blows, it also caused its downfall by triggering Overgrow. Like Blaze with Infernape, the ability supercharged Grovile's natural strength. Using the strength the powers afforded him, he dodged Earthquake, landed Pound, and won with Leaf Blade. The earning of the Balance Badge led Ash to use Grovile against Winona's Altaria in a sky-high gym battle. Altaria landed Peck and Dragon Breath, but Grovile seized victory anyways thanks to the arena's pillars, Bullet Seed, and Leaf Blade. Unfortunately, Winona's Swellow got its revenge with Aerial Ace. In the episode Training Rex during Grovile's next battle, he and Pikachu fought Rocky's Quagsire and Walrein. He initially offered little to the match as Pikachu cancelled out Leaf Blade and Walrein rocked him with Ice Ball. Once Ash realized how to counter Ice Ball, however, he beat Quagsire while Pikachu beat Walrein. Grovile's growing power filled Ash with pride, so Ash used him against Drake of the Elite Four in Vanity Affair. Though he was totally outmatched throughout the battle, he still tried his best. Altaria dodged Bullet Seed, landed Takedown, used Dragon Breath, evaded Leaf Blade, and won with Solar Beam. Over the course of the episode's Grade 8 Fate and Ain't Ain't Enough, Grovile tried to regain his honor as Ash's ace by battling Wan's Love Disc. Sadly, his leafy Cyclone wasn't enough to overcome Sweet Kiss and Water Gun. Despite losing several major battles, Grovile never stopped conducting himself with quiet pride. As one of Ash's most trusted Pokémon, he provided ample help, just like he did to Satrico. Notably, he stopped a river from flooding Riotto Town, snacked a Wishcash that took Ash's badges, and taste-tested May's cooking. He also repaired an airplane, stopped Corfish from bullying Torchic, and helped train a Slackoth. As can be expected, all of his dedication throughout the saga paid off in spades at the Hoenn League. In shock and bonds during his first league match, he and Glalie fought Clark's Kulava and Charizard. The fire types impeded their advances and resisted Icy Wind, but faltered after Glalie and Grovile refocused their efforts on Quilava. Although Grovile eventually beat Quilava, he also fell to Charizard. Fortunately, Glalie avenged his loss and advanced Ash to the next round. In a judgment brawl, Grovile went all out against Cadence Walrein. Walrein dove underwater, evaded Leaf Blade, and landed Ice Beam, but Grovile banged it out of the water and froze the field with Ice Beam. Although Walrein then mimicked Quick Attack, Grovile held strong and let off Leaf Blade. He also dodged Body Slam, used Bullet Seed, skated away from Ice Beam, let off Quick Attack, and won with Leaf Blade. Next on the plate for the Hoenn League was Morrison Steelix in Choose It or Lose It. Grovile forced the Iron Snake underground, sensed its locus, powered through Dragon Breath, and triumphed with Leaf Blade. He almost earned a second victory over Morrison by beating the trainer's Gligar, but his speed, hiding technique, bullet seed, and agile movements were no match for the trainer's guillotine. Grovile's final appearance at the Hoenn League took place during the top eight matchup and at the end of the fray. He weakened Tyson's Metagross by aiming bullet seed towards the crack on its head, but failed to survive Meteor Mash. His attacks weren't for naught, however, as they weakened Metagross just enough for Pikachu to beat it with Thunder. 
Regrettably, Ash lost anyways, as Pikachu then fell to the Meowth in boots. Following the league's end, Grovile returned with Ash to Oak's lab in the right place at the right mine. Before leaving with Ash for the battle frontier, he met Heracross and the rest of Ash's reserves. Like in Hoenn, Grovile provided ample help throughout the saga. He saved Nolan and Numero Uno Articuno, beat up Onyx and hooked on Onyx, and helped Mudkip evolve in a chip off the old Brock. To reward Grovile for his efforts, Ash used him against Frontier Brain Greta in Wheel of Frontier. At the battle's start, Greta's Hariyama blocked Bullet Seed, slammed him into the ground, and pushed him backward with Arm Thrust. Grovile staged an epic comeback with Quick Attack and Leaf Blade, but Hariyama used his speed against him and won out with an epic blow. While recuperating from the loss and odd Pokemon out, Grovile accidentally invaded Atropius' territory. He defended himself from the Pokemon's advances, but lost to Steelwing, Gust, and Razor Leaf. Had Nurse Joy's Meganium not stopped Tropius from delivering the final blow, he likely would have never recovered. Shortly after Meganium healed his injuries and stole his heart, Grovile sought out a rematch. He did so, so as to take his revenge, regain his confidence, and prove his worth as a lover. He won the battle using Bullet Seed and Leaf Blade, but his efforts were ultimately fruitless as Minganium rejected him for Tropius. Even though she broke his heart into a thousand pieces, Grovile didn't hesitate to defend her when Team Rocket launched their assault. He evolved into Sceptile in order to save her, but instead got beaten up by Cacnea and Saviper. The two did him major damage, because his heartache had left him too traumatized to activate any of his moves. Sceptile losing his power turned him into a shadow of his former self, so Ash worked day in and day out to help him regain his abilities. Ash's heart was in the right place, but his lack of romantic history made it hard for him to empathize with Sceptile's plight in spontaneous combustion. Sadly, Sceptile's feelings of hopelessness hit their zenith in cutting the ties that bind. During the episode's first half, that he ran off, banged his head, and cried out in despair. To make things worse, his cry attracted Beedrill and led to Pikachu getting lost in the forest. While looking for Pikachu, Ash and Sceptile renewed their friendship by offering each other their support. Their search revealed that they would do anything for each other, even if it meant withstanding a Beedrill stinger. Pikachu and Frontier Brain Spencer ended up rescuing them, but Team Rocket disrupted their bliss using a nasty net and nefarious scheme. When Ash tried to rescue his captured Pokémon, he took heavy damage from Dustox. Fortunately, his injuries ignited Sceptile's passion and gave the Pokémon the push he needed to recover his powers. Using them, he both rescued Ash and blasted off the trio. To celebrate Sceptile's return to glory, Ash used him against Spencer's Shiftry in Kaboom with a view. Shiftry presented a huge threat as it dodged Bullet Seed, intercepted Leaf Blade, activated Double Team, and landed Rock Smash. But Sceptile scaled a waterfall, let loose Pound, and won with Leaf Blade. Following a brief break in his Pokeball, he then helped Ash against Spencer's Claydol. Claydol fired off Psybeam, evaded Bullet Seed, and triggered a Tidal Wave, but he survived by jumping to higher ground. After doing so, he tanked many attacks, dodged Hyper Beam, collected Solar Energy, unveiled Solar Beam, and earned Ash the Spirit Symbol. To cement the fact that he was back at full fighting strength, he then went claw to claw with Scizor in curbing the Crimson Tide. In order to seize victory, he crawled across buildings, tanked Hyper Beam, glided through the air, and unsheathed Leaf Blade. In Pokemon Ranger Deoxys Crisis, Sceptile further proved his strength by facing off against Deoxys. Likely because of his stellar performance against the Legendary, Ash used him against Pyramid King Brandon in battling the enemy within. Sadly, he never stood a chance against Brandon as the King of Pocalantis fought in Ash's stead. The King got frustrated after Regirock shrugged off Sceptile's first attack, so he had the Grass-type bury the Legendary, hide behind the ref so as to avoid Hyper Beam, and aim for the Rock-type's needs. In spite of the cowardly tactics, Regirock won anyway thanks to Lock-On and Hyper Beam. It's worth noting that Sceptile found the King's tactics completely abhorrent. He only listened because he thought he was taking orders from Ash. Rather than rematch Brandon, Sceptile's next battle was against Maze Blaziken. At the Terracotta Contest and once more with Reeling, he started off the finals with some fancy footwork. He landed Pound, shot off Bullet Seed, extended Leaf Blade, and sent Blaziken flying, but Blaziken countered back with Fire Spin. After Sceptile dodged each and every Sky Uppercut that came his way, he then let loose Leaf Blade, shot off Bullet Seed, and fired off Pound. In the next leg of the battle, he then traded Leaf Blade for Sky Uppercut and Pound for Blaze Kick. Due to the battle's intensity, 
both Pokemon activated their respective abilities of Overgrow and Blades. They exchanged many attacks thereafter and tried to finish the battle using Solar Beam and Overheat, but the resulting collision led them to have equal points when the timer elapsed and the home is where the start is. After seeing that the tie thrilled both Ash and May, Sceptile split the ribbon they won in half so that they'd each have a perfect memento of their awesome battle. Once the contest concluded, Sceptile made his home at Oak's lab while Ash traveled through Sinnoh. Sceptile missed out on all of the Sinnoh gems, but came back for the league in the semi-final frontier. His return opposite Tobias's Darkrai offered him the ultimate redemption for his loss against Regirock. While Gibble and Heracross had done the mythical considerable damage, it was at near full health when Sceptile emerged because it had already drained their energy with Dream Eater. At the battle's start, Sceptile missed Quick Attack, tanked Ice Beam, and got subdued by Dark Void. Dream Eater sent him into his own subconscious, but he woke upon hearing Ash's plea. Soon afterwards, he became the only known Pokemon in all of Sinnoh to beat Darkrai by vanquishing it with Leaf Blade. Although he then fell to Latios's Giga Impact, nothing can detract from the legendary victory. Since losing to Tobias, Sceptile has stayed at Oak's lab. He made a brief cameo in Black and White, but made a full comeback in Pokemon Journeys. Not only did he help train Surfetch for the Masters 8, but he also cheered on Ash as he competed in the tournament. It's unknown if Sceptile will do anything else of narrative note, so for now, let's get to his battle record. Sceptile beat 21 Pokemon and lost to 17. His most impressive wins were against Norman Slacking, Katie's Walrein, Spencer's Shiftry, Spencer's Claydol, and Tobias's Darkrai. The strongest opponents that defeated him were Drake's Altaria, Tyson's Metagross, Greta's Hariyama, Brandon's Regirock, and Tobias's Latios. Sceptile's one and only tie was with May's Blaziken. Move-wise, Sceptile used Pound, Quick Attack, Bullet Seed, Leaf Blade, Solar Beam, Agility, and Leaf Storm. Sceptile is an awesome character, but I can't help but feel the writers did him a major disservice by not giving him a more extended arc like that of which we saw with Charizard, Infernape, and Greninja. Not only should he have been fully evolved before the Hoenn League, but I also think that he should have replaced Pikachu as Ash's last man standing at the League. Since most of his appearances were focused around battling and utility support, I have to admit that he doesn't feel quite as important as an ace. Although I still thoroughly enjoyed his character, and was glad to see him establish his place as an elite fighter by beating Darkrai, I hope he gets more narrative growth whenever he next appears. And with that, class is adjourned. I want to extend a special thanks to both Surfshark and the channel's patrons. If you'd like to watch class early and get access to exclusive perks, make sure to sign up for Patreon via the link in the description. For other ways to support the channel, make sure to like this video, comment your thoughts, subscribe, and hit the bell so you're never late. Until next time, catch you later.